going to be looking at energy levels in atoms. When white light is passed through a diffraction grating, a spectrum is produced which shows all the wavelengths of light separated out. White light contains a continuous range of wavelengths from 400 nanometers for violet to 700 nanometers for red light. However, the light emitted from a helium gas discharge lamp is not continuous, but is actually discrete. It only contains specific wavelengths of light. And this provides evidence that electrons in atoms have discrete or specific or quantized energy levels. This diagram is showing you the quantized energy levels for an electron in an atom. So n equals 1 represents the lowest energy an electron can have in an atom. And we call this the ground state. So the lines are representing the energy levels that are allowed for an electron in an atom. The electron is not allowed this energy or any energy between energy levels, but only these specific energies. And when n equals infinity, the energy of the electron is zero. That means the electron is a free electron and it's no longer bound to the atom. An electron can move between energy levels if it absorbs or emits photons. So specific transitions, so that is, for example, n equals 1 to n equals 2 or n equals 2 to n equals 3 or n equals 3 to n equals 2. These specific transitions will emit or absorb a specific photon and so specific wavelengths of light will either be emitted or absorbed and that's why you get a line spectrum discrete wavelengths of light being emitted or absorbed, not a continuous range of wavelengths. A sodium gas discharge lamp emits two wavelengths of yellow light. For these two wavelengths of light to be emitted, electrons move from a high energy level to a lower energy level, emitting photons of light. So photons of light are emitted when an electron moves from a high energy level to a low energy level. An absorption line spectrum shows dark lines, which shows the absence of colours, because these will be the wavelengths of light that are absorbed by the atom. And this occurs when the electron absorbs a photon and moves from a low energy level to a high energy level. And the dark lines of an absorption line spectrum matches the coloured lines for an emission line spectrum. And that's because it's representing the same transition of an electron between energy levels but in reverse. So when an electron moves from a high energy level to a low energy level, a photon is emitted and the energy of the photon is given by the difference between the energy levels. So it's the high energy level minus the low energy level will equal the photon that is emitted. So this diagram is showing you the energy levels for a certain atom. And here's an electron in its lowest energy level, the ground state. 
and it has an energy of minus 18 electron volts. So energy levels have negative values, indicating that the electrons are bound inside an atom. If an electron absorbs a photon of energy 6 EVs, that means it will gain 6 EVs of energy and so will be excited to the minus 12 EV energy level. So the difference between these energy levels is 6 EV. It can then emit a photon of 6 EVs, so it loses 6 EVs of energy when it returns back to the ground state. If the electron absorbs 9 EV photon, then it's gaining 9 EVs of energy and so will be excited to the minus 9 EV energy level because the difference between the minus 9 EV and the ground state energy level is 9 EVs. And then this electron can emit a photon of 9 EVs when it returns back to the ground state. And if the electron absorbs a photon of 15 EVs, that means it will gain 15 EVs of energy and so will move to the minus 3 EV energy level. And then it can return back to the ground state by emitting a 9 EV photon. So it's moved from a minus 3 EV energy level to the minus 12. EV energy level and then it emits a 6 EV photon moving from the minus 12 EV energy level to the minus 18 EV energy level. Alternatively it could emit a photon of 15 EVs and go straight back to the ground state. Each atom has its own unique set of energy levels and so produces its own unique line spectrum. So the line spectrum acts like fingerprints to identify which atom produced it. So if you have an unknown spectrum and you are trying to find out which atoms created that spectrum, then you compare the spectral lines with the spectral lines of known atoms. And so for this case, by comparing the lines, we can see it's made from the atoms of lithium, potassium and rubidium. Light from the sun is a continuous spectrum but it has these dark lines, so it's an absorption spectrum. So the dark lines are representing the absence of light, the wavelengths of light that were absorbed by the gases in the atmosphere of the sun. So the dark lines in stellar spectra, that is spectra from stars, can be compared with the absorption spectra of the separate elements in order to work out the composition of stars. And stars are classified according to which absorption lines are prominent in their spectra. And the sun is a G-class type of star. And the redshift of light from distant galaxies represents the shift in the absorption lines towards the red end of the spectrum, which provides evidence that the galaxies are moving away from each other and provides evidence of an expanding universe.